Hey YouTube, welcome back to another episode of Chad Williams Fixes All. For some of you astute viewers out there, you may realize that I'm not Chad myself. Uh, I have another channel that I've partnered with Chad here for this episode of introducing you to the Power Probe 3 and its functionalities and how to utilize this in your everyday shop. Before we get started going through the Power Probe, the functions we're going to talk about are very basic and they're going to be able to identify your powers, your grounds, the functionality of the power probe itself, as well as utilizing it on an exterior independent battery and trailer system or exterior components. When utilizing this in a vehicle to test modules and test components, please pay attention to your manufacturer's diagrams. That way you are 100% certain you know what you're testing and what wires you're testing on if you are done incorrectly, you can damage not only the ECM or PCM, whatever module you're working on, but also other components within the vehicle itself. All right, starting with the introduction of the tool itself, when you get it out of the box, you are gonna first start with the cable connector, which is gonna be from this red brick all the way over to your negative and your positive cables. That is gonna be one option to get to power. In the box, you're gonna have two other options. You're gonna have another 20 foot extension cable that's in there as well as a cigarette lighter connector that's in there as well. It comes with 18 feet of power cord attached to it. So most vehicles you can get from the battery all the way to the back of the vehicle if you're working on trailers or rear lights or something of that nature. Working directly through the tool, first you're gonna notice we have the ground clamp. Here on the end of it comes down. It's got a nice little cable, keeps it nice and secure. We're gonna have a speaker, a mode button. You're gonna have a negative and a positive switch. Up here, you're gonna have a red and a green indicator light, depending on whether you're on battery positive or on battery negative. You're gonna have two headlights here that work up the light area that you're working on, as well as an interchangeable tip that Power Probe sells separately, and we'll have links to those, as well as not only the Power Probe 3, as well as other Power Probe options that are currently out there on the market. All right, now that we've seen the individual pieces of the Power Probe 3, we're gonna show you how to set it up initially. You're gonna hook up your negative battery cable, to your negative battery and your positive or your red cable up to the red. You're gonna hear it ding and go through a self check. You're gonna see double zeros or nothing on the screen. You're gonna to touch it and test polarity right there. You're gonna hear a negative tone as well as see double zeros on the screen. And you're gonna to touch the positive and you're gonna hear a different tone and you're gonna see the battery voltage with this case I believe is gonna be 12.3. So now that we've got the unit hooked up and the polarity checked and it is correct. So we have our negative hooked up correctly and our positive hooked up correctly and we've identified that we have over 12 volts of battery voltage through the unit. We're gonna go through and identify chassis grounds. This is a 2016 F-150. It is an aluminum chassis. They've done some weird things with some of the bolts that run through, especially in this upper frame area. As you can see, this is an uncoated bolt. We have no ground here because we have no tonnage from the speaker. Just behind it, we've got a good ground. So we have a great ground there. If you're looking under the chassis or inside and you're looking to ground something out from there, this would be a great tool to utilize to identify whether it is a good or a bad ground for whatever components you're either working to install or just verifying that you have a good ground on that unit. Now that we have good chassis grounds located, we're gonna test some components that require power. We've got the fuse box open on this F-150 and we're gonna identify a blown fuse in this scenario. So I'm gonna test a known good fuse right now and we're gonna see that we have 12 and a half volts on either side. A good 12 and a half volts on either side. The next one up, got a good 12 and a half volts on that side. And you notice we have zero tonnage through the speaker, but if you can see it there on the screen, we've got about 0.1 volts on the screen itself. So we're seeing some voltage and that looks like feedback more than anything else in this scenario. So we know this 10 amp fuse is blown. So we've got that fuse replaced in here now. We're gonna verify that as a good fuse. 12 and a half volts, 12 and a half volts. Known good fuse is back in. Everything is up and functioning on it. I do have to explain one limitation on this unit. Just because we saw a blown fuse, whether it be for the cigarette lighter or wiper motors, whatever the case may be, this unit will not help you identify what the cause of the blown is. It'll just help you identify which circuit to work on 
to see what the component is that made that fuse blown, whether that be a shorted wire or if it is a component holding too many amperage and that is blowing the fuse itself. All right, working with continuity tests, we're gonna simplify this as easy as we can and show you a known good fuse as well as a known bad fuse to identify what the unit looks like when it is in continuity mode. So we're gonna utilize the ground unit. This is our known good fuse. We're gonna hook it into one of the leads of the fuse and then we're gonna to touch the probe to the other end and you're gonna see that we have no tonnage because we have no power passing through it but we do have a green light with zeros on there, meaning that we have good continuity through there. Changing that out with a known bad fuse, we're gonna do the same, attach the negative arm, and we have no light coming on indicating that fuse is blown. Whether you're looking to identify whether a light bulb has no continuity through it, a motored unit, a switch, if you're looking to identify whether a switch is functioning when it is closed, uh, whether it's a fuse or something of that nature, this would be a great test to be able to utilize that component for. Now we've tested the power probe inside a vehicle's engine compartment, identifying the functions of it as well as identifying good grounds and good battery positives in the way of fuses. We're going to show you quickly how to go through an external process. So I've got an external battery, just a standalone battery. We've got an older trailer here that we suspect, whether it be the actual light bulbs or whether it is part of the wiring harness, uh, identifying what components we need to replace from here. So starting, we've got the positive and the negative hooked to the battery. We've got the power probe hooked up. We're gonna hook up our ground cable to the ground of the trailer itself. Looking at the four pin, from a standard four pin configuration, you have the ground, you have the running lights, you have the left turn signal, and then you have the right turn signal. So we can identify we have a good ground. We've tested continuity, so that works out really well. We're gonna test the running lights. So we simply put it in there, we've got good continuity. We're gonna hit the positive, which is going to put lights on in the rear. Just verify those work. And then we're gonna move over to the left turn signal. We've got good continuity. We know we don't have a broken wire in this scenario, which is great. We're gonna hit the positive. We see voltage on the LCD screen. We should have a light lit up there, but I know this is where our issue is currently. And then on the right turn signal, we're gonna do the same, get good continuity, hit the button, and our right turn signal lights up from there. Now we need to go back and check the components in the rear to see what the issue is within the housing itself. All right, we've moved to the back of the trailer now. I've removed the cover for the lights, pulled the light out, and I've done a visual inspection and the bulb itself is not burnt. Uh, we'll walk you through how to test exterior components here in a second uh, on this particular light bulb to show you that both filaments do work, but I wanted to show you here on the trailer first. So we found a good ground. This is an older painted trailer. Who knows how many coats of paint are on here. We're actually connected directly to the license plate bracket right now. So we'll show you quickly. We'll touch the exterior of the light bulb housing to identify that yes, we do have good continuity with the grounds. And then we have two power outlets. So it's a dual filament bulb. As you can see from the bulb itself, we have two units that we need to illuminate. Uh, and then we'll actually look in here briefly and we'll test continuity of these two units. So now that we're testing one filament, we see we've got a good green light and a zero zero, which means we have good continuity. On the other supply, we have no green light, meaning there is no continuity there. We're not seeing any voltage pass through. So this is going to be the cause. So needing to replace this entire assembly will fix this trailer issues that we have right now. So now using the bulb that is outside the vehicle or outside, in this case, a trailer, we can actually utilize our power probe to identify whether that bulb is still functioning. And understanding how components work is gonna be the main idea of understanding how to use the power probe. In this bulb's case, the exterior casing of the lower unit is going to be the ground section, and we're gonna have two power units down at the bottom. That's gonna be your positive sort. So if we put our ground lead against the outside casing, put our power probe against one of the nubs, we see we have a green light on here. We can actually hit the positive, and the bulb illuminates. We can move over to the other nub. We still have a green light. Hit the positive, and the bulb illuminates. 
and we saw two different brightnesses on there so we understand and we know both filaments are functioning in this bulb. So we understand and know that this housing has to be an issue and we diagnose that with our power probe. All right, the last test we're gonna do is identifying outputs. Whether in our case, we're testing the trailer output on the four pin of our F-150, or whether you're looking for signals from the ECM in different components in the way of voltages or negative switches, depending on the component that you're identifying. In this case, we're gonna go to our four pin. We're gonna verify that we have a good body ground. We see the negative light light up, therefore we have a good negative ground. We've got our hazards on to identify our turn signals working. And as we touch our left turn signal, you can see our battery positive start flashing. That means it is working. And then you see on the left, the same thing. Our battery positive flashes, therefore both our left and right turn signals function. And if we hit the key, we'll actually see our battery positive stay on constantly. And now we see the battery positive works when we're on the running lights. Thank you for watching this basic tutorial on how to utilize the functionality of the Power Probe 3. It is one of my favorite tools that I currently have in my toolbox and able to diagnose just about any electrical issue with other components that Power Probe has to offer that we will link in the description below. You're able to identify 99% of the electrical issues that are currently out there on the market, whether it be a 12 volt, 24 volt or even a 5 volt system, you're able to identify those issues. You can find links to all of the items we use today, plus more offered from Power Probe through Amazon. Check out our other videos that we have up right now. We've got many more coming in the future. Again, thanks for watching. Thank you.